Hi, I'm Paul Salmon. I'm a spiritualist medium. My guest today is Gareth Lewis, who is a fellow medium. Hi, Gareth. Hi, you alright? Yeah, yeah, and uh, you come from Manchester. Manchester, so, yeah. So thanks for yeah. the, the no, long journey fine. down south. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. You're celebrating your 20 years. 20 in, years of demonstrating uh, mediumship, yeah. How have you kept um, going off for so long? <laughs> oh, hard work. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going. It's, uh, it's through the love of doing it, I think, and the yeah. passion. Uh -huh. um, you know. How are you marking this 20th year? Uh, this 20th year we're doing uh, a UK tour, um, uh, starting off up in the Manchester, Lancashire, Cumbria, um, then coming down to Wales and then hopefully by the end of the year moving further down south. Uh -huh. uh, so we've got venues booked at the moment and we start on the 3rd of March in Leeds. Oh right, okay. Uh, and then move on to Sheffield and then continue from there. Are we talking about theatres? Yeah. Uh, these are halls um, and uh, smaller uh, venues yeah. um, with uh, small theatres yeah. uh, put in there as well. Excellent. How do you work, Gareth? How do I work? Yeah, I mean, do you hear voices? Do you see things? Uh, well, I believe as a, as a medium we've got to use all the faculties that yeah. we're, we're given. Uh, so the clairsensors, clairvoyance, clairaudience, mm -hmm. and then uh, the claircognitus, which is just just knowing. Yeah. Um, so uh, as well as that, we've got to use the psychic as well. So every medium's got to use the psychic ability. Mm -hmm. You hear so many times mediums saying, I don't work psychically. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we have to. You know. if they say all mediums are psychic, but not all, all psychics, psychics are mediums. Are mediums yeah. And that's where the, the, um, the problem lies sometimes with people. Mm -hmm. You know, they come to see a psychic expecting a mediumship reading and, and vice versa yeah. and uh, I find that when I do my private readings and um, within that first few minutes I've got to know why they come. Have mm. they come because they want to know about their life or have they come because they want uh -huh. uh, someone from the spirit world. So how did your med how did you, let's say, when did this spiritual awareness begin as a child or is it something you've learned to develop? No, I've, um, it's always been around. Uh, my family have always spoken about it and uh, my grandmother was a medium, uh, not demonstrating, not working, just um, very mediumistically and mm -hmm. giving readings to people. Um, and as a child I would see things and I would play with imaginary friends mm -hmm. uh, under the table in the kitchen. Um, and my mum used to have um, seances in the house where she'd have the glass on the table really? and I used to creep up on the stairs and watch and um, and sit there with my brother, he was mm. petrified yeah. and I was thinking it was so fascinating. Um, so this was see. like normal life to you then? It was just normal life, yeah, and then it, it kind of disappeared for a little while yeah. uh, as I grew older, you know, I got older and uh, just little things happening. Uh, when I was in my teenage, uh, quite a few things would happen in the house and my brother would get his friends up and say, yeah, I see what our Gareth can do. Yeah. You know, go on, move them, move them curtains. Uh, you know, I'll get there and he just thought it was all funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's just slowly got better and better, you know, stronger and stronger as the uh, time went on. So did you start going to spiritualist church? I was in spiritualist churches when I was in my mid-teens, I used to go with my mum every now and again mm -hmm. um, and then I started in my early twenties um, and I had a, a nervous breakdown through a really bad patch in my life mm -hmm. and I walked out of the house one night and I was either going to go and walk off a cliff or I ended up in a spiritualist church, mm -hmm. so it's either live or die. I'm glad you chose and, to live. Uh, yeah, well, I, <laughs> was walking, now, I was walking down uh, into my local village and um, I thought, no, I'm going to go and get a video, I'm going to go home and I'm going to, you know, and I thought, no, I'm not, I'm going to, I've, I've finished, I've had enough now. Mm. And before I knew it, I was sat in my local spiritualist church, uh, somewhere I'd known because I'd been there before. And I sat there and I thought, I've come home. Mm. You know, I felt like I, I was where I was meant to be. I know what you mean. Uh, yeah. And it was just a path. I was. I walked out the ice that night, not meaning to come back. Yeah. And uh, it was something which was, you know, a difficult time in my life. Yeah. Uh, so through the spiritualism, the churches have helped me. You know, and uh, before I knew it, I was sat in a circle. And um, and and doing what I'm doing. 
So you, you started off as a platform, what we call a platform. Uh, I mean, in church. churches, yeah. When did you make the jump, or how did that jump to theatres or halls come? How did that jump start? Um, jump start. <laughs> jump start. <laughs> that was something which just was just a natural uh, thing, you know. I, I think my first one was I was invited to go and work with someone in uh, in a theatre mm. uh, as a guest medium. And and I, I just felt like that was that was great, yeah. you know. And so I wanted to do that. Uh, so I got offered to do things, and it just it just took part of, mm. of, of my you know my pathway. Mm. Um, I enjoy doing the the demonstration of the churches or the theatres. I enjoy them more than I do the private readings. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's just me being a showman, or you know. But it, yeah, it's partly showman, but it, there's a big sense of. Um, how can it self satisfaction isn't yeah, it? Yeah. That passing on these messages from loved ones who are supposed to be dead mm -hmm, but they're not yeah. dead to let people know about life after life. That's right, yeah. And I think um, that's what keeps you going and it's what it's what keeps going and um, the experience I think when I had when I was younger, when I first started, uh, has helped me so much mm -hmm. because I now understand when people come to me for a reading or when I'm working I've got more of an empathy for them. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, I remember a friend of mine, Mavis Patilla, um, said to me many years ago um, that every time you do a private reading, because at that time I wasn't keen on doing private readings, mm. you know, one-to-ones, uh, and she says so many people come in and it's those people you'll learn off and, mm. you know, you'll understand more mm. uh, about the work that you're doing and it's all right, you know. Um, so the people I meet now, I understand what mm. they're going through. You know, in different aspects of the life. Yeah, you mentioned Mavis. I, I worked with. Well, I didn't work with her. Mm -hmm. She taught me on a course once. And, uh, if you're her friend, get her down here, would you? <laughs> yeah, no, I'd love to interview Mavis. Yeah. You know, now, I've worked with Mavis uh, on, on a number of occasions, uh, doing demonstrations, and uh, she's lovely to work with and uh, to watch as a demonstration. I could just sit and just listen to her. I've been day. told she's been called the medium's medium. The medium's medium. Yeah. Yeah, I won't. Oh, yeah, I'll agree with that. I've heard yeah. that. But she's very genuine, very old school mm. in, her, in her teachings as well, in her ways, and that's where I was taught. A mm. uh, very old school medium. Um, today, I think a lot of it's changed. I, I think the whole thing of the spiritualist church has changed. What people expect when they go to a church or when they go to a demonstration um, has completely changed, you know. Uh, How, how's it? Do you mean people got high expectations? People got different yeah. expectations of going for a reading. Yeah. So uh, some people, um, they expect you to just tell them what's going on in their life, mm. you know. And I believe that the message within the message is very, very small. Mm. You know, as, as a spiritualist medium, we're here to say, look, I've got mm. your mother and this is who she was and this is what she was like and these are her experiences and this is what time she passed and, you know, the evidence. Mm. And then the message at the end is, She's aware of what's going on around you at the moment mm. and she's with you and supporting you in whatever that may be and that is the message mm. uh, which is within the yeah. message, you know. Well, I understand what so you mean. So a lot of mediums, I believe, now are like, they're talking too much about, yeah. you know, oh, no. what's going on in your life, yeah. you know, and it's not that, you're forgetting about the spirit. I, I had a lady once and I said, well, I've got your dad here, I described him, his age, and she goes, yes, but will I move house? I thought, I thought, well, I've just given you your dad, you know, yeah, <laughs> she yeah. wanted to, no, I thought, yeah. well, that's her decision, isn't it, to mm. move house or not? Yeah. But that's the way things have changed, you know, uh, yeah. and we weren't allowed to, when I was sitting, uh, mm. we weren't allowed to do anything like that. No. You know, if we went on to give the message, it was stopped, no, mm. who have you got with you, you know, and, uh, and that was the old teachings, I think things have slightly changed a little bit. Mm. Whether I agree with them or not, that's, you know. Are you teaching yourself, Gareth? Uh, I do teach. Um, I took uh, um, uh, classes last year, um, but then I had to stop taking, doing the classes, you know, doing the teaching mm. uh, due to last year's tour. Mm. Um, so this year I've started doing a little bit more. I enjoy it. I love, mm. I love doing that as well. You know, the teaching is just at the moment I can't commit to every week or, you know, because of the dates I'm committed to. I don't ask this question often. I have asked another medium once. I'll ask you, if I took your gift away, how do you feel? What would it do to you? Um, I believe that if I wasn't doing what I'm doing, mm. uh, then I wouldn't be me. So the spirit within mm. wouldn't 
be right no. you know so how many times over the years probably like yourself mm. uh, oh, I'm going to stop I'm, I'm not doing this anymore mm. you know what's it what's it what's it about what's it worth you know so many times I've come away from say the churches and I've been in tears I've been upset mm. you know because it's not been right or I've not felt right or I didn't you know because I, I, I want to do it the best I can every mm. time um, and I think if I if I did stop how many times I've tried to stop and I just no just been drawn back you yeah. know so it's meant to be so yeah. I don't think I've been me if I stopped yeah. and I, I love doing it and you'll know that it's, it's that like you said before that self-satisfaction mm. of being able to help someone and uh, and give them that you know yeah. that love from the friends who have passed over what about hobbies have you got time for hobbies other interests I always ask my guests outside right um, outside the main interest you no know? I, I have no hobbies I have no I don't do any sports I'm, mm. you know my own my other thing away from this is just I've got two kids so I'm a single dad and um, so now they've got a bit older has allowed me now to do more work and, and talk well, this year bigger that's your interest yeah that's so life, then that's, that's what I do so other than making sure that they're doing as they're told yeah. then you know that's the that's only thing I've got so I've got my kids and, and my mediumship work quite boring life really isn't it How, no it's exciting <laughs> and it's then you come here today so Gareth, how have you kept your authenticity as a medium in, a, in an age like today where people want instant information? I think it's just about keeping grounded and keeping down to my roots where what I've always taught. Yeah. Um, I'm not a believer in uh, bringing people uh, information that's not coming through truthfully, you know, uh, or through people use instruments, uh, tools, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and I don't do anything like that, you know. Um, and tools are great to work with through psychometry uh, when you're learning mm. um, and I just think today people are just getting confused between the psychic how they're receiving that information and how they're receiving the mediumship yeah. and can, the you, can you just explain for those who don't know the difference between mediumship and psychic so the psychic uh, uh, how you pick it up psychically is uh, me being able to tune into you and your aura and um, things what have happened in your life and any ailments you've got, you know, mm. uh, and then the mediumship is on a completely higher level mm. uh, where, you know, the spirit world and your friends in the spirit world will communicate through the different clothes mm. um, and, and allow me to sense what they were like um, and, and how they experienced their life and the memories mm. they had. Um, and it's two different things so yeah. sometimes when you I mean there's demonstrations I watch and I think they've not proved spirit you know they've not proved who they've got with them and they're just saying they're telling me this and they're telling me that and mm. you know there's no real mm. proof and yeah. um, it's I'm not saying it's easy but it's kind of like if you work with the spirit world they'll make it very easy for you yeah. to, to understand you mm. know how to work with them Mm. Are you still learning, Gareth? Learning every day. Oh, yeah. yeah, learning every day. I mean, sometimes when I do a demonstration, I'll come home and I'll think, you know, I've learned so much tonight uh, of what to do and what not to do, mm. how to put myself across and how not. And I get told off uh, so many times yeah. by people who work with me yeah. uh, and say, don't do that, you know. Um, and if I'm given a message, um, sometimes I find it difficult to come away from the emotion I'm feeling mm. with them you know so that's something that I'm still working with now I'm still trying to learn mm. sometimes when you're giving such a, a wonderful message and a deep meaning message what means a lot and maybe your sitter is sat upset or mm. you know and, to, and you feel that emotion sometimes mm. I find myself in with them yeah. you know and I need to so that's something I've struggled with that's just because I'm quite a sensitive person yeah. or I mm. think I am mm. um, and you know I feel like um, I get too involved and too attached you know and that's something you need to step away and that's why I teach when I do be teaching yeah. is one of the first things what I'm still learning to do now is s step away mm. from you know that emotional yeah. connection a away from an audience or away from a church congregation can you improve can you do homework if you like to to improve your mediumship, do you uh, work? Can you work on yourself? Yeah, a lot of people uh, sit and uh, and sit with spirit and you know and and, and work that way. In meditation, people uh, go onto that 
altered state yeah. that way. Me personally, I've not got time um, mm. to just sit, mm. you know. And every time I sit for a bit of me time and meditation, the phone rings, the dog barks, mm. the dog goes, you know, and life's just too fast. If we go back to the old school mediumship, how wonderful it must have been mm. for those mediums to be able to get that clear communication. There was no Wi-Fi, there was no TV, there was no, you know, interference in the atmosphere. Mm. And it was just so pure that yeah. they could just sit in that silence yeah. and, and communicate with spirit. Mm. Uh, and that today is so hard to do, to be able to shut the mind down. And I find that very difficult. Mm. So now before I work, I used to think at one point I had to meditate, I had to sit, I had to pray, I had to, you know, do something. Mm. But now I just turn up to a demonstration send my thoughts out and just say that I'm here and if you want to use me then you know please do okay so Gareth what um does any message you've given over the all the years stick in your mind uh, I don't I don't know about any particular message uh, one particular reading or situation um, stuck in my mind. I was working in London mm. at the SAGB uh, quite a few years ago and someone came in and uh, going back to what I was saying earlier on about how I experience life, how I can help or at least understand it and empathise with someone mm. and I sat and he came in for a reading and um, I think the only thing I said was hello I'm Gareth and I never said a word after that. Mm. And he just spoke and he brought down and he was either going to come in for a reading or end his life. Mm. And I never said a word. And afterwards he said to me, he said, thank you very much, you've helped me so much. Mm. And I never said anything. I never gave him a message. I just sat and I just listened. And that sticks in my mind. And for many years, and even now, uh, I often think, I hope he's okay. Mm. Because I understood why he came in and hopefully he took the same path of continuing his life like I did. Mm. I still think about him, uh, mm. you know, from time to time. Yeah. And um, and hope he's okay. I'm sure but that's is. a situation which I, I remember because it, it kind of, I understood him, mm. you know? And, uh, and to be able to do a reading and work for spirit isn't just about giving a message mm. and telling people about their lives. It's being there for them. And he needed you at and that, he needed at that some, moment. Yeah, he needed me and I didn't know yeah. that he needed just to be able to just talk to someone and I'm not a counsellor. No. But he must have, he, he did, he felt so much. But I think you do give counselling. Within, yeah, yeah without actually yeah. knowing. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I, hopefully I helped him. Yeah, you know? I'm sure you did. Yeah. Gareth, it's been a pleasure having you on my sofa today. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Do come back again one day and I hope to. let us know how your tour goes. I will. Thanks so much. Thanks.